Good morning. It's 7 a.m. I just woke up, and today we're going to the Kennedy Space Center. I'm gonna watch a rocket launch later in the day. And now, breakfast. But now I should provide a little bit more context. So we're in Florida and we're about two hours away from the Kennedy Space Center. So today we're gonna to be spending the day at the Kennedy Space Center and then watching a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket launch later. And now I'm all dressed and ready and we're gonna be leaving in about five minutes to go to the Kennedy Space Center. We're at the visitor complex and this is the countdown to launch. Behind me is the Apollo 7 rocket, by far the biggest rocket in the rocket yard. And behind me is the gateway building and we're about to head in to have our first indoor experience here at the Kennedy Space Center. There's a ton of decommissioned rockets in here and it's super cool and we're going to check out some of the immersive experiences later but above me is one of the old Falcon 9 boosters. We checked out some of the other decommissioned rockets before heading into the line for our first fully immersive experience. During this experience called the Red Planet, we were not allowed to film but it was essentially a ride that used wind and seat movement to immerse you on a journey to Mars going through the Earth's atmosphere and taking a full voyage to and from Mars. That experience was super cool and it reminded me of something we did in Iceland, which I did in the vlog, so that was super cool. But now we're back outside and we're looking for the next thing to do. Behind me are all the countries that have ever gone to the International Space Station, which is super cool and there's a ton of them. And here is the infamous space shuttle Atlantis. Behind me is a replica of a real control room here at NASA. And here you can see videos of actual events that was in a control room that looked similar to this. And now we're getting on a bus that will take us to the Saturn V Center to see the rocket launch in just a couple of hours. The way up at the top is the port launch system. Built in the 1960s for the Apollo program. Before I can continue the video, I have to give you a little mini history lesson on the importance of this building right here. It's called the Vehicle Assembly Building, or sometimes referred to as the VAB, and it was used originally during the Apollo missions to build the Saturn V rocket and eventually roll it out of there. And it continues to be used since the 60s for currently missions like the Artemis missions. So it's a huge deal for NASA, and it's really like their main recognizable building, and that's why it was so cool for me to see in person. Back to the video. Upon arriving at the Saturn V Center, we were shown a short video explaining the disaster of Apollo 1 and it commemorating the lives of the three astronauts who lost their lives in the cabin fire. Next, we were brought into another replica control room, this time with the actual consoles and devices used during the Apollo program, and it was to show us an immersive retelling of the Apollo 8 mission launch, which was super cool, and uh, check it out now. from today's sponsor, Boxed Water. Boxed Water just released their brand new cherry lime flavored water in collaboration with the new movie, If, starring Ryan Reynolds. 
I recently went to see the new hit movie in theaters, and I loved it almost as much as I love Fox Water's new Cherry Lime flavored collaboration. The flavor is awesome, and the detailed carton design is the Cherry Lime on top. Fox Water will plant two trees when you post a picture of the carton using the hashtag BetterPlanet. Fox Water is a more sustainable alternative to plastic bottles. They have already planted more than 1.5 million trees, and they have a mission to eliminate single-use plastic bottles. Go see IF in theaters now and go to the link in the description or scan the QR code on screen for Box Water's new cherry lime flavor and to read more about their dedication to saving our earth. You'll also get 20% off site-wide as a bonus. After that, we walked through the Saturn V Center and we got to see some of the really, really cool artifacts. And I even got to touch a real piece of the moon before heading to the viewing site because now we're going to see a rocket launch. What you see here is the actual Saturn V rocket. We secured a good spot to view the launch from, and now all there was left to do was wait. I walked around and captured some video of the launch tower as we closed in on the final countdown to launch, and finally, after a long and awesome day at the Kennedy Space Center, the crowd began the countdown. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, science and cargo take flight on NASA's SpaceX 30th commercial. Pitching down range, hearing good calls of performance. Nominal trajectory as Falcon. This is mission Falcon 9 at 1.7 million pounds of thrust. Pitching down range, hearing good calls of performance. Nominal trajectory as Falcon 9. Dragon, mark out to the northeast. Miko. Stage separation confirmed. Really cool view of Cape Canaveral Coast. And there it goes. Now coming up, we have that landing burn starting in just a few moments. Landing leg deploy. Wow, wonderful views of that first stage landing. Stage one landing Back at landing zone one. Here yeah, comes the sonic boom. Like that. The launch was awesome and it was just the craziest experience ever. Everything today was so cool and now it's time to leave the Kennedy Space Center. The upper stage of the rocket, Dragon, continued to coast through Earth's upper atmosphere towards its destination of the International Space Station. After a long and exciting day at the Kennedy Space Center, I was ready to go home. It was all super fun and I hope you enjoyed me bringing you along with me. SpaceX's mission was successfully completed early the next morning when the Dragon capsule docked with the International Space Station. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for future videos. Peace.